Hotep, Hotep. Yeah, this video is about um the men fight creation story of ancient Kemet. But um the story of Pata is one of the um oldest stories in the world. It shows how uh it explains how the physical universe was created through the eyes of the ancient Kemites. And it explains how uh, even human beings came into existence from the spirit realm. First off, the name Pata means um, he, the um, the overlord of two lands, he who supports the heavens and the earth. Meaning, this uh, Pata is the aspect that brings us into the physical realm and out of the physical realm. See, Pata is the aspect of Asar. Asa is the Lord of the Perfect Black, meaning the Lord of Eternity. And he is painted green sometime, meaning for vegetation. He can be painted blue for um, the Nile. And uh, the blackness, which all things come from. So he is uh, the regeneration state of um, life to keep life going on. And as you see in the obelisk, the obelisk represents the male phallus, which keeps uh, physical creation going. But spiritually, it represented um, the phallus that kept the whole universe going. Yes, there there are a lot of different aspects of the story. You can check out the Shabaka Stone and get the exact translation. But I'm going to summarize it. See, Pata is the aspect of the soul that brings everything into existence along with his wife. Because the ancient Egyptians understood that it always took two for something to come into completion you have two stages then you have the third which was the final stage so Pata and his wife Sekhmet turned um, Noon which was the primordial primeval waters into Nunet which was the heavens the um, space Primo primeval waters is the chaos and the heavens was the order of of the, the different stars and the different planets Hugh was boundlessness and who had was set boundaries which act which created time and space. Kuk was the darkness and Kuket was the light. See the um this is where the Christian when the Bible come in says God let there be light, they're talking about Pata and Amen, which is the hidden. Amenet was the manifest. So these these are all eight children in the myth, and they all represented from Pata to Sekhmet to Nefertim. Nefertim is, uh, means beautiful completion. So from these eight children, we have the eight stages of creation. Yeah, the number eight represents the physical universe. You see, there's two zeros like stacked on each other. It's just like infinite possibilities. It's it's a number of infinity. And then when you have the, the God force behind the eight, that turns it into a nine. So that's that's coming into completion or coming out into the physical realm and out of the physical realm. See, Pata represents the thought power and Sekhmet represents the action behind that thought. And those two stages become Nefertim. So this is when, when we came from the spirit realm we had the thought to come into the, the physical realm but we had to go through nature and that's when our parents got together and from the thought power uh, combined the thought power from the spirit combined with nature brought us into this third dimension so we actually chose to come in and we chose the gateway which is Pata Pata being the aspect of the soul that makes the whole physical realm exist and his wife Sekhmet, with the the lion head goddess, is the dynamic power of nature, the duality behind nature, the 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 passion, the love, and the pain, the hatred. All of this is is um Sekhmet. Sekhmet represents the duality of nature, and Patab being the mind behind it is the aspect, the spiritual aspect, which is non-duality which lives through all dual aspects see how the story directly relates to us because none of these characters 
physically existed outside of us. They all are aspects of us. But Ta being the physical builder of the universe, he can be seen as the aspect of you that wants to build up your body, build up your character, build up your spirit. And Sekhmet can be the part of that actually gets that part done, coming from the masculine thought. She is the part that makes you eat right. Yeah, because every everything is done in three parts. You could think about something all day. But you ha actually have to get down and do it in this third dimension. And this is the power of Sekhmet. So you have this is the warrior aspect. This is the, the loving aspect. This is this is all of everything you can think of throughout creation is done. When it's done on a strong level, it represents Sekhmet. See this it's uh thought, action and completion is the Trinity. That's all the Trinity is, man, woman, child. Man being the logic, woman being the spirituality, and from those two you have a complete state. So everything must be dealt with in the logical mind first, and then you bring it to your heart, your passion, and from those two you have completion. See, Pata is also, um, it was a ceremony in Kemet called the opening of the mouth ceremony. This was symbolized as um, a person in a dead state would have their their the mouth was seen as it hold it held your spirit in human consciousness it, it you held it shut but if you open your mouth opening of the mouth you open your expansion your consciousness throughout to all of the universal information open it beyond the normal human and creation was seen as to come from the mouth. It came from the Word of God, and the Word of God is uh, all of us when we speak. Yes, words have power. So the first aspect was a spiritual death, a spiritually dead person. And when they would open the mouth, the power of God would come out, bring all things into existence. And another aspect of the opening of the mouth was when a person was physically dead, and they would open his mouth and uh, spread his soul, bring his spirit back into the universe. Yes, uh, Pata is associated with uh, three three symbols. The first one being the Uaz. Uh, any being that carried the Uaz was, was to possess the power and control over his or her own destiny. This was a very powerful symbol. The kings would hold it in uh when they would when they would get drawn up on the walls or the or the statues. And the second one is the Ankh. And the Ankh is the um com combination of the masculine and feminine, the phallus and the vagina, which keeps all creation going within human beings or the positive and negative keeps all creation going throughout the universe. And the third one was the Dijed. The Dijed was the spine of Asar, and Asar being the soul. So Pata, the, the, the symbolizing of the awakening of the soul was the Dijed pillar. It's the soul going back into perfect form instead of being trapped inside of this physical realm. Yes, um, Pata is a deity that brings us into, into the physical realm and out of the physical realm. So Bata is going to be that, 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 that thought process that you want to um, resurrect and ascend into the blackness. But you have to do that with your actions in the physical realm and that's Sekhmet. So when you have the thought power and then you combine that with your actions, your life force actions, you can meet Nefertim. You can go in that that is completion beyond the physical realm. And they call that Amen the Jed. Amen being the hidden and the the Jed being the awakening of um, the the um the soul back to uh its perfect form. Yes, this Amen the Jed is what you would call heaven today. It is the realm of supreme peace, total blackness. Hotep.